Okay, so moving on to part two, quinoa botany and genetics. So quinoa, quinopodium quinoa, is a member of the Amaranthaceae family and it's grown primarily for its seed, but um, many f people do also eat the leaves. We actually thin quinoa every year in our breeding program quite a bit, so we always have quinoa um, leaves to eat, and they're they're quite good. I enjoy them, um, but I also enjoy pretty much any kind of green from chard and kale to nettle. So, but it is it's a great green, and it one of the interesting things we've noticed is that it it'll keep for a, quite a long time, um, six to eight weeks in our refrigerator without showing any damage. So so that's pretty. Um, pretty different than lettuce or many of the other greens. It's a pseudo cereal so not a true grain however uh, we still often call it a grain in our program um, we had five Andean farmers come visit last August and they told us that you know having quinoa being called a pseudo cereal is insulting to them and they prefer it being called a Andean grain so so we still stick to grain um, it is related to beets and spinach and also to common lamb's quarter, so Kenopodium album or and uh, Kenopodium berlandarii. It's gynomonaceous, so that means it has female and perfect flowers um, on the same individual plant. And I'll show a picture of that here. This is a photo taken by Adam Peterson, a graduate student who who just finished in my lab. And so this shows. On the left, um, a hermaphrodite flower, you can see this, the sepals have been removed, so you can see the anthers here. Um, and then right here, it's a little hard to see here, but this is only a female flower, so there are no anthers in this flower. So, And this is quite common. We will often see hermaphroditic flowers um, on the very ends of these little spikes and panicles, and uh, the female flowers will be more... Um, located proximal to the um, central stem. Quinoa crosses um, about 10, at a rate of 10 to 17 percent. There are reports of uh, outcrossing even higher than that. So it's still predominantly self-pollinating, but it, it can outcross quite readily. It's wind-pollinated. Um, so for uh, isolation distances, we often, if, if we need to keep things separate, we keep it at about 300 feet, and at that point, there is less than one tenth of one percent of any crossing to occur. Through most of our uh, trials, though, we just keep it a couple feet apart from each other, um, and and it it doesn't seem to cross too much there. But but within each variety or population, they're very diverse. They're almost if you would compare them to weed, it'd be it'd look more like a heterogeneous land race. We see very few quinoa varieties that are actually quite uniform. So there is a lot of crossing going on and and that's not necessarily a bad thing. We're, we, we're, we try and work with that as much as possible. So the flowers are grouped um, together to form a primary panicle um, depending on how closely the the, seed, the plants are together um, will that'll determine how much branching there is on each quinoa plant but they have the potential to branch quite significantly um, and in many parts of Bolivia or Peru, they often do multiple harvests. So they'll they'll cut the primary panicle first, come back a week or two weeks later, and then start cutting branches and, and getting more seed. One of the things we're breeding for is um, mechanical harvest cultivation. So, so we do seed a little denser and try and get the um, seed to mature all at the same time. So again, quinoa is a facultative autogamous annual, so that's essentially it's, a, it's an inbreeder with a f uh, capacity to outcross. It's an allo, allo polyploid, so it comes um, from two different genetic backgrounds as opposed to an auto, auto polyploid. Uh, the base chromosome number is 9, so it's 2N4X equals 36. Um, Luckily, the inheritance is primarily disomic. Um, that's true for most of the qualitative traits. Uh, we do see some tetrasomic segregation in a few qualitative traits, and then um, in quantitative traits as well. Um, and then down here, Jeff Mon, he's from Brigham Young University. He's 
put together a great webinar on genomic resources for quinoa podium quinoa. And the researchers, Jeff and uh, Rick Jellin and others at Brigham Young University, have been studying uh, quinoa genetics for 15, 20 years. So that they're really a phenomenal resource for, um, for us here in the US. So there are some related species. Uh, I'll just touch on two of the most important ones because we see them quite a bit in our fields. Um, the first is Kinopodium album, common lamb's quarters. It's an allohexaploid. Um, it is considered a weed in most of the U.S. and it lacks domestication traits that are found in quinoa such as shattering and a hard seed coat. So that essentially means that um, lamb's quarters or Kinopodium album has dormancy that most quinoa varieties do not. In fact, almost all quinoa varieties do not. So lamb's quarter, for example, 3% of the seeds will germinate um, right away after after the seed shatters and hits the ground. The other 97% has various uh, densities and thicknesses of the seed coat, so they'll just start, they'll keep germinating over the next uh, month to decades. Um, quinoa doesn't have that, so w that was one of our main questions when we started the breeding program was, is quinoa going to become a weed in other fields? And um, there's really very little dormancy. There's only one variety that we found that has any dormancy at all. Um, we tested it um, down in Oregon with a, with a grower down there, and it, it had about three months dormancy, and that, that came out of Argentina. But almost all every single other quinoa variety um, we've seen will germinate quite immediately. So when you do combine it and the seed goes blowing out the back of the combine, um, as some will always always do, it, it will it won't become a weed, so it'll germinate right away, and then that seed will die over the winter, at least in the northern U.S. And then, um, and that'll be the end of it. Okay, so another related species, this one native to the U.S. is Kinopodium berlandarii. It's also called Hoisantle or Nodal's goosefoot. Hoisantle is the term um, used in Mexico and primarily um, for when it's used as a, a leafy green. This uh, Berlandaria is an uh, allotetraploid, and so it has one diploid ancestor in common with quinoa. It is quite ri widespread, um, all the way up to Alaska from Mexico, um, and there is evidence of domestication in the eastern U.S. Um, it, its seeds have been found in these rock shelters in Kentucky, and this is one of the um, species we've made some wide crosses too. So we've crossed quinoa with Berlandarii with the hopes of being able to transfer some heat tolerance into quinoa. So quinoa, if it gets just a rule of thumb over 95 degrees um, during pollination in the summer, th the uh, pollen will, will become sterile and so no seeds will be formed. Um, well, most of the U.S. That's, that's a problem because it does become quite hot. So you can either beat that by planting early or, or maybe even planting late so you miss that period or you, or one strategy we're working on is breeding for heat tolerance in quinoa and and to do that we've made crosses with Kinopodium berlandarii um, and so again down here Rick Jellin from Brigham Young University has put together this is a fantastic uh, webinar on um, related species to quinoa um, re really great uh, worth worth uh, worth looking into. Okay, so we'll move on to part three. Um, we're going to talk about our breeding program.